Live from WFSB, Connecticut's number one local news, this is Channel 3 Eyewitness News at 7. Live right now on Roku, Apple TV, and the Amazon Fire Stick. Today, millions across our nation are honoring those who lost their lives during the September 11th terrorist attacks. You're taking a live look now at the 9-11 Memorial South Pool in Lower Manhattan. Thanks for joining us on this Friday. I'm Nicole Nalepa. Ceremonies to honor the lives lost will be happening today in New York, Pennsylvania, and Washington, D.C. Of course, they're going to be looking a little different due to the pandemic. Here in Connecticut, people will also be reflecting and remembering. Flags have been ordered to fly at half-staff. 161 people with ties to Connecticut died in the attacks that day, and the state held its official ceremony yesterday to honor their lives. It was a period of time after 9-11 when we were united, like we hadn't been united in many, many years. It was a good feeling that we were together towards that cause. Today in Meriden, a moment of silence will be held at 8.30, and a flag from Ground Zero will be raised. It's right outside of City Hall. And then at 8.30 at the Groton Naval Base, the Southeastern Connecticut Navy community will be conducting a flag retirement ceremony. And in Milford, a virtual ceremony will be held to remember victims Michael Miller and Avnish Patel, both graduates of Live Oak School, as well as Seth Morris, who was a student at Matthewson School. That will be on Facebook and YouTube at 8.46 the time the first plane struck New York's World Trade Center. You'll be able to find more about those events and others on the Channel 3 streaming app. And this morning, Bridgeport Police Chief Armando Perez and the city's acting personnel director are both facing federal charges after accusations that they rigged the hiring process. The U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of New York claims that acting personnel director David Dunn stole questions on the application exam and gave it to Perez when he first applied for the job. Investigators also say two Bridgeport police officers agreed to take Perez's written exam for him. Bridgeport's mayor, Joe Gannam, says the city will pick up the pieces and move forward. There is a grappling for uh, some of the answers as to what has happened, disappointment, um, uncertainty, but I can tell you this, that the members of this administration remain committed to you the state of Connecticut. Assistant Police Chief Rebecca Garcia has been named acting police chief. Meanwhile, the community is asking for transparency and a voice in the selection of the permanent police chief. Connecticut's back to school authority is sponsored by Yale New Haven Children's Hospital, one of the best in the nation. It's a pretty tough start for schools across the country, including here in Connecticut. Many school districts, including Manchester, are dealing with a rise in COVID cases. Actually, in Manchester, the middle schools closed today. The superintendent says a student reported having COVID-like symptoms and coming into contact with someone who has the coronavirus. Channel 3 Eyewitness News reporter Caitlin Nuclo has the latest on what parents need to know, really, across the state. Manchester Middle Academy is the latest in a wave of schools that are closing because of COVID-19. Today, the school will be deep cleaned while students learn from home. Nearly a dozen districts across the state have already reported teachers or students testing positive for COVID. And in Meriden, the district says a student showed up to Lincoln Middle School while waiting for their test result. He did test positive, and now an entire classroom will have to quarantine for two weeks. In Naugatuck, a high school student tested positive Wednesday. Health officials say districts will have to be flexible this year. I think as people are changing their work patterns and their school patterns and going out of the house more because people are returning to school, that's really increasing the risk. Caitlin Nuclo, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. The fight to save high school football now heads to the state capitol today. Governor Lamont has called a meeting this morning between the CIAC and the Department of Public Health on fall sports. On Wednesday, hundreds rallied for the CIAC to reverse its decision to cancel full contact football. Be sure to keep the Channel 3 app handy with you because we'll be sending updates as this morning's meeting is actually happening. 
All right, a different day than yesterday. Yesterday we had rain, almost two inches of rain in Bridgeport, uh, an inch and a half in Milford. Uh, not a whole lot in uh, northern Connecticut, and as you can see, the rain is gone now, and we're going to enjoy a much better day. It's going to get drier. The temperatures are going to remain between 75 and 80 degrees. It's going to be a beautiful day today. You'll notice increasing amounts of sunshine as we move through the afternoon. More of the same for the shoreline. Temperatures right in the mid-70s. It's going to be a beautiful day at the beach. Uh, temperatures there are uh, just so comfortable with partly to mostly sunny skies as well. Now the temperatures this morning are above average 71 in Norwich 72 in Groton. The typical overnight low is 55 for this time of year. Believe it or not, it's going to be 49 overnight low tonight 49 that is cool uh, that means a lot of towns in northeast and northwest connecticut are going to be dropping below that so uh hmm, that's chilly uh but not right now those temperatures are way above average and the dew points are still in the low to mid 60s but these will be dropping into the upper 40s and low 50s as we move through the day today so a fairly comfortable day and here's early morning futurecast tomorrow's dew points today to prove that to you. I just ran the clock down through 630 tomorrow morning. Look at the dew points tomorrow morning when you wake up 4140 in Torrington. That's really good. The numbers are going to be dry and throughout the day tomorrow they remain in the upper 40s, low 50s. Here comes the sun. Doo -doo -doo -doo. It's all right now. Hartford, good morning to you. We've got some pretty good amounts of sun in stores. A little bit of hazy fog in the distance there. Uh, New Haven, you guys are looking at partly to mostly sunny skies right now. And as you can see from the 12 hour loop, we did have rain in the state. Uh, this was at about 7 o'clock last evening, so that rain continued to make its way on out. And as you can see now, it's to the east, south and east of Connecticut, uh, bringing a whole lot of rain to the fish out there, but not for us here in Connecticut. So we're going to dry out. We're going to get rid of the clouds. And according to early morning future cast, tomorrow's weather today, we see an hour by hour depiction of not a whole lot going on during the day today. It's absolutely beautiful. Tonight will be clear and cool. Temperatures dropping into the mid to upper 40s, low 50s for inland Connecticut. And then uh, we're taking a look at tomorrow, future cast tomorrow's weather today keeps us high and dry with mostly sunny skies. So as we move through the day today, the temperatures once again, 73 for Salisbury, 74 for Torrington, 78 for Enfield, Hartford, Middletown, just a gorgeous day of weather today. And then your seven day forecast includes 75 tomorrow, mostly sunny skies. Sunday, there will be a chance for some showers in the afternoon, although we are backing off on the potential for those showers. Um, they'll be around later in the day, but they don't look to be nearly as widespread as uh, once thought. And then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday all looking great with temperatures in the low to mid 70s Tuesday and Wednesday. And then Thursday we start to inch up closer to that 80 degree mark. Here are your shoreline highs pretty equivalent to where we're headed inland. Get out there and enjoy today and tomorrow two beautiful days. All right, Nicole, we'll send it back to you. All right, thanks, Scott. Thank you so much for tuning in to Eyewitness News. Remember, you can get news and weather updates anytime on the Channel 3 app. And just another reminder, we're going to have the latest on the Channel 3 app on that meeting taking place between the CIAC that Governor Lamont had called. Have a great day, everyone, and a good week.